All right. Welcome, everybody. My name is Robbie again, and uh, I am the person leading this 12-step process. Uh, we have now gotten two-thirds of the way through the 12 steps. This is step nine that we're talking about today, which brings us to the two-third mark in the 12 steps. Um, so yeah, well done for anybody who's been tracking through these series. Um, just a reminder for anybody, if you haven't seen steps one through eight, uh, I would encourage you to pause and kind of go back and check those out um, and then return to this talk once you've kind of uh, completed the original uh, first eight steps. So uh, that's just my personal kind of encouragement on that. But yeah, we're going to be picking up today um, talking about step nine. Um, again, this book or the, the step nine that we're talking about is um, based on a book called The Steps to Freedom Workbook uh, by Doug Weiss. There's many different other versions of the 12 step process that people can use and go through. Uh, but this is just the one that we're using in this particular group. Um, again, I would encourage you just to treat uh, this time or anything that I say here just as an opportunity to crack the book and look at it. Um, and if anything comes to mind, just write down uh, notes as I'm talking. Um, so yeah, we'll jump into step nine. So step nine, um, it reads, we made direct amends to, pe to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Uh, and a biblical verse that I find goes well with this step is uh, Matthew 5, 23 to 24, which says, therefore, if you are offering a gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Um, and that's just an excellent kind of summary of what we're talking about in this whole step is there are things that actually can separate us from recovery or separate us in our relationship from God. Um, and the things that separate us are breakdowns in relationships that are around us. And so this step is all about that. Um, now that we've kind of realized the extent of our sin, we've realized the brokenness that we've kind of let ourselves uh, get into. Uh, this is an opportunity to try and repair some of that damage. Um, so as a reminder, uh, the word we is used instead of the word I uh, in all 12 steps, because this is meant to be a group-based program. Um, if we do it on our own, there's a great chance that we will get discouraged and just stop uh, and not get the full benefit from the program. So as a review, uh, in the previous step, uh, step eight, we were given the opportunity to begin the amends process by creating a list of all the people that whom we had harmed in the past. In order to fully put to rest the sins of our past, it is essential that we take responsibility for our actions and apologize to those whom we have hurt. Through some serious soul searching and with the help of God, uh, we now have the most important to-do list, uh, if, you, if you will, that you will ever make. Um, this list has the potential to change key relationships in our lives for the better and also can guide us um, in how to conduct ourselves in future relationships. So step eight, we created the list of people that we have harmed. Uh, and now step nine, we're going to tackle that list. So now in step nine, uh, we will be going through a process of evaluating which relationships, which people need a either a direct in-person amend uh, such as a face-to-face -face conversation, um, having a phone call or video call with somebody, or even writing them a letter. Those are all what we consider to be direct amends, or uh, those who need who we need to make an indirect amend with. Um, this is referred to in the book as symbolic amends, um, or I also will refer, refer to it as living amends. Um, and in that sense, we're not meeting with them in person, but we are um, symbolically going to, you know, pretend that that person is with us and we're going to share out loud the things that we've done to that person, uh, but not in their presence. We're going to pretend that they're there um, and then we're going to commit to God um, and to ourselves that we're not going to act in that way towards other people um, in the future. So step nine is another one of those steps that truly separates um, those who are really committed to their recovery uh, from those who are just trying to complete this process for ulterior motives. Um, some of us, you know, maybe we feel pressure from those around us to do recovery, um, or we think that by doing recovery that we'll, you know, prove to somebody that we're all good now. And so we can just move on with our life and act as we always kind of did. Um, and th that's not the case here. We really want to be fully invested. We want to do this for our sakes because we really can't, um, we can't determine how others are going to react to us. And if we do recovery for somebody else's benefit, it's not ultimately going to cause the life change that it, we really need it to in our lives. So um, step nine is, this particular step nine is a lengthy process and it doesn't actually fit into the same uh, time parameters as most of the other steps have up until now. You will likely be working on making your amends um, to complete your step nine over the next couple months. Um, so 
I, however, I would say don't delay the process because of that. Um, it's important to act on our amends while we're motivated to do them, uh, not just forget about it or, or or think that, you know, I'll get around to it later because uh, ultimately or very likely we will end up losing the motivation and we won't ever get around to making the amend that we needed to do. Um, and the devil can use that as a foothold to just discourage us and to keep us stuck in recovery uh, and relapse. Um, however, the reality is that sometimes it can take a few weeks to arrange a meeting with someone uh, that we have to make an amends to. Um, so again, just start the process of making those contacts um, and arranging you know, those meetings, but we know that those meetings might take a few weeks to kind of get completed. This step, step nine, really requires, in my opinion, a sponsor, uh, a sponsor's support as they will work with you to determine what type of amends are most appropriate for each individual person. Um, the way I see this going and it, uh, the way I've done it in my life is that I present my initial thoughts on what method I think would be most um, appropriate for each person. Um, and then I explain the full nature of my relationship with that person to my sponsor. But then in the end, I let them have the final decision. So for instance, if I have a person on my step nine list, um, or a person that was on my step eight list that I'm now adding to my step nine uh, in the book, um, say they were... Um, uh, a friend of mine who I had, um, through my addiction, I'd become very um, introverted and I didn't go out and I didn't see people. And so I al allowed our friendship to kind of suffer uh, and waste away because I was just constantly by myself um, engaging in my addiction of choice, right? So I need to make an amend to that person. My initial thought might be that I want to have, you know, a phone call or a video call with that person. But if I share the full nature of my relationship with that person, my sponsor might say, you know what, you need to you need to figure out a way for you to actually be in person with this, with that individual so that you can properly make amends um, and do it, you know, to the best of your ability. So as much as possible, we always want to expose ourselves to that person the most. We want to be in their presence if at all possible. Um, but there are circumstances where we have to use other means, but if possible, we want to be in person. But a sponsor really does get the final say on what approach you use. Sometimes my first impression might be that I want to, you know, keep some distance between myself and that other person. Uh, but really, my, you know, the sponsor might say, you know what, you need to really get in front of them and show them your face kind of thing, because in order to be fully upfront with them, um, or vice versa, maybe my intention is to uh, have an in-person amends with uh, a woman that I used to know who I used as a, a subject of my lusting. Uh, but the sponsor in that case would wisely say, no, that's not appropriate in any way for you to meet with that person because they're, they were a temptation for you in the past. So again, the sponsor is somebody that you can bounce um, every single individual off of, um, they'll kind of understand the situation and they'll advise you as to exactly what approach you need to take with that person. So once you've um, determined, you know, the list and how you're going to contact each person on your list, um, contact them, um, arrange to meet with them, uh, whether that's in person or via video call or a phone call. Um, and then when you are planning to meet with them or just have a phone call, you need to plan an un uninterrupted space and time in order to interact with that person. Um, while coffee shops might be great for certain types of interaction, you really need a coffee shop that has kind of like a quiet back corner where you're not going to be disturbed if you are going to meet out in public. Um, or for instance, you could go for a walk, you know, in an area that's not crowded or something like that, or have them over to your house and, and, and have a room available that only you guys are going to be in and you're not going to have kids coming in or your wife coming in or anybody like that. So um, it's really important to set the stage right um, and just plan ahead to have a, a situation at a time where you're not going to be interrupted um, and when you meet with them um, share about what has been changing in your life share the journey you've been on acknowledge what you did to damage that relationship um, express apology for that and, and and express a desire to not ever do that to that person again uh, that's kind of the process of what we're looking for here when we're actually uh, meeting with a person so just something that's really important to note is that um, making amends is not a guarantee that that other person will feel the same way or will forgive you, or will forgive you immediately. Um, this is a, a sad just reality. Um, while we may be on a healing journey uh, personally, the other person may not be ready yet and they may not be able to reciprocate um, at that moment or even ever. There's some people that we may make amends to and they may say, well, thank you for taking the time, but I would not extend the same, you know, statements to you. And I don't want to see you again. So there are aspects, uh, unfortunately, where at times like things don't get better right away and may never get better. Um, the important part is that we have to 
um, do what's called sweeping our side of the street as a metaphor. Um, the goal is that um, we acknowledge our wrongdoings and commit to a change in lifestyle that would guide us to not act in that same way again. So we're doing everything on our part, everything we have control of um, to change, you know, uh, or to to make right what's been done in the past and, and make a new kind of pattern in the future. But we can't uh, determine what they're going to do. Um, so when we do these men's, we have to continue to bathe these times in prayer uh, and ask for God's will to be done. Um, and obviously we want a, we want a favorable result to happen, but ultimately we want what that person needs um, to happen. So if that person needs to take a few more years and that relationship isn't healed right away, um, we need to just trust that God is in control of that situation. Um, for those uh, of us who, or for all of us, when we're making any kind of indirect amends, so we've been talking about the direct amends where we meet in person and we apologize, but when we're making indirect amends, um, which again, the book determined calls symbolic, um, or I call kind of living amends, uh, it's important to book a couple hours by ourselves, again, in a distraction-free environment. Take your list um, and one by one, pray to God for all the people that you're making indirect amends to. Uh, pray to God, confessing what you've done to that person and apologizing for what our part was in the wrongs that took place. Um, it can be helpful, and the book talks about this, to imagine that the other person is sitting in front of you in a chair, um, hearing what you were saying. Uh, after doing this, kind of confessing everything out loud, um, ask God to help you to not act in that way. Um, that you did before to anybody else in the future uh, and commit your life to this new uh, lifestyle. So really, whether you're meeting in person or doing an indirect amends, the, the goal is the same. We're confessing what we've done. Um, we're we're owning what we've done and the impacts that that has had. And then we're you know committing to God and to ourselves and another person if they're in person with us, um, that there's going to be a, a change in the way that we go forward. So to summarize, um, step nine, the goals are to uh, firstly determine what type of amends we will be making to each person with the help of our sponsor. So determine who those people are, what the style will be. We then need to contact and arrange meetings with all those people that we're making direct amends with. Um, we need to pray and ask God to prepare you and the other person for those interactions. And we need to also ask him to resolve all outstanding um, symbolic or living amends. So uh, that's really what the process is all about here. Um, so then just some guidance based on the steps to freedom workbook. Um, so, uh, regarding some specific questions that I thought would be good to draw attention to, um, on page 87, we have, um, a list again. And again, the, the, what we're doing here is we're taking the people that we acknowledged on our step eight list, and we're just putting the names in the left-hand column of this page. Um, and then we're, what I did when I, when I did my set of steps is again, I, I, I looked through it and I thought, what do I think the best, most appropriate way to respond to that person would be? And I put a dot in the column that that best represents what that person or what that method of of, me, of amends would be. So there's the face-to-face, -face, the call, letter, or symbolic. Uh, again, I call it living amends. So I put dots in all the, all the columns that I thought it should be. But then I took it to my sponsor and I said, hey this is the list. Um, these are, you know, the, this is, this is this person, this is my relationship with this person. And then, um, for a few things here, I, I ended up changing what I had put down that where I'd put a dot, I ended up putting a check mark in a different category. So once you know exactly what type of amend you're going to be making, uh, put a check mark in that column. And again, it, it might be the same, or it might be different from the one that you initially thought that it should be. So that's kind of my impression as to how it worked well for me. Um, then on page 88, um, on under the heading uh, that says accept, um, this column is used for anybody who you're making those symbolic or living amends with. So anyone who it's not appropriate for you to meet with them because they were, you know, a previous um, person you had a relationship with or somebody that somebody that if they were to know what your life had been all about, it would cause massive harm to them that they actually have no awareness of at this point. Those are the people you add here. So these are the people you're going to go and sit down with God uh, with an empty chair in front of you and kind of talk through apologizing to that person um, as if they were there in person. Um, but it's not appropriate for you to meet with them in person. So that's the people you write there in that category. Um, and then on also on page 88, the very bottom um, section, which says after talking to each of the persons you listed above, this question onwards, um, you only come back, well, I only came back and I finished this at the end when I was done all my step nine amends, because this asks you basically, how did it go, right? So you can only know how it's going to go once you've gone ahead and done your amends. Um, and then, uh, 
yeah, you can come back to that later. So if there's somebody that you couldn't meet for with for some reason, um, you know, list those people there. So um, again, step nine, you can start it now, um, but then um, once you have started step nine, once you've made arrangements to meet certain people, um, go ahead and start working on step 10 because um, step 10 and step 11 and step 12, they they go in chronological order, but step nine just inevitably takes a few months to kind of get everything done. Um, if we have to meet certain people that are hard to get a hold of. So once you've gotten to this point, um, just take a pause on step nine, you know, keep working on the amends, but then start working on step 10 after that. So, um, yeah, those are the main key points I think related to step nine. Um, again, we're really, yeah, we're, we're, we're making, courageous efforts to meet with people, to be open and honest with people that it's safe to do that with. Um, we're seeking to have things change if that's possible um, and to change inevitably, or definitely the way we act in the future. So if there's people on this list that, you know, you've harmed because you, you know, you've been lusting over women and they've noticed you looking at them, you know, this is where you say, you know, I'm putting a line in the sand. I don't want to do that in the future. Um, I don't want people to feel uncomfortable around me as they have before. Um, things like that. Um, you know, having extramarital relationships. These are things that I've confessed. These are things I've done and I don't want to do that again. Um, so whatever that is for you, this is where you kind of are committing to change uh, your pattern going forward. So um, I think that's most everything I have to say on this step. Um, again, encouragement just to keep going. Um, step nine is one, like I said, that really separates people. Uh, I think one of the, the the worst ways to kind of handicap your step process is to kind of get stuck on step nine, um, to maybe, I don't know, just assume that you'll have the opportunity to do these things later in life. And the nice thing is God does sometimes put people in your way, you know, a few years later, maybe even people that you actually weren't, it wasn't appropriate for you to meet with, but maybe sometime 20 years in the future from now, you will have an opportunity to just say a brief sorry to that person and, 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 and just confess, you know, what you did. Um, but at this time it's just not appropriate, but, um, yeah, don't get stuck on this. Keep moving. Um, set a time, uh, start working on step 10 once you've done most of the step nine work while you're waiting to meet with the people you need to meet with. So uh, we'll leave that there for now. Again, um, yeah, if you haven't found a sponsor, somebody to run those people by, I would encourage you to go out and find that person. Um, it's really, really important to have somebody look over your list and kind of make sure that you're um, taking the right approach that you need to with the different people. Uh, because there's sometimes we might want to over talk or over share with people that it's really not appropriate to do that with, uh, or vice versa. So yeah, I wish you all the best in that journey as you make amends with those who um, are on your list. And um, yeah, we will see everybody soon for the next step in step 10. So thanks a lot and take care.